Okay, so here we are with friction, lesson seven, and our final lesson of this unit. And friction is really, really important that we understand it because we would like to be able to describe motion completely and the source of motion, which is, of course, um, forces. And really, almost every single mechanical movement involves some type of friction. And so it's important to study this if we're going to accurately kind of predict and describe motion entirely. So to understand, though, what friction is, we should note that there's a force of attraction between any two materials. Okay, and this attraction is, of course, on a microscopic level, right? So at, really at an atomic level. And, you know, when two materials pass over each other, of course, they form these um, electrostatic bonds, right? The positive atoms um, or the positive parts of some atom and the negative parts of other atoms, you know, there's an attraction at the atomic level, right? And this kind of is what results in the stickiness between surfaces, right? So here's surface one, and at an atomic level, it's not smooth. Even the most smooth surfaces, right? Even if you polish, 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 when you look at an atomic level, they're still rough, okay? And when these two surfaces move back and forth over top of each other, all these little ridges here catch on these little ridges here. And they're not really ridges, they're kind of positives and negatives and, and atoms. And so at a molecular level, these two things, there's a lot of stickiness here. And, and this is what friction is. This is where what it results from. Now, the magnitude of the force of friction, so how big the force of friction is, is determined by the types of materials in contact and by the normal force that's exerted by one object onto the other. Okay, so basically what this means is if you've got, and, and, and you've seen these two things in principle, right? So mu is basically a measure. It's called the coefficient of friction. We're going to talk about mu. We're going to talk about the normal in a minute. But mu is the coefficient of friction. And it depends, there's only one thing that it depends on, and it's the kinds of surfaces that are in contact with each other. Some things have a very low coefficient of friction, and so they slip across each other very easily, right? So, for example, a hockey puck traveling on a sheet of ice. Those two objects, between them, have a very low coefficient of friction because a hockey puck will slide for a long distance before it eventually comes to rest. Now, there is friction there. It's not frictionless, but, um, but it's a very low coefficient of friction. Right? Two things that have, say, a high coefficient of friction are um, perhaps concrete um, and, say, the sole of, of a running shoe or, or um, um, something with that's very rubbery, right? So rubbery and, and or, or perhaps the sole of a non-stick shoe and, uh, and tile or a, a non-slip shoe and, and tile. And so these are things that might have a high coefficient of friction um, and... and basically would prevent slipping. So they would prevent a lot of slipping. And of course, the normal force we looked at in last lesson, and of course, the force of friction also depends on the normal force. So how how hard two things are pushed together is also going to affect how much friction there is. And so one of the things that we've noticed is that, or, or you might have noticed, it takes greater force to move a stationary object than it does to keep some object in motion, the same object in motion. And this is because of the fact that there's two types of friction. The coefficient of static friction, so there's static friction, which basically is the friction between two objects at rest. And then there's also kinetic friction, and that's the amount of friction between two objects in motion. Okay, And so the coefficient of static friction, which is mu s, and we can see that right here, is bigger than the coefficient of kinetic friction. And one of the reasons um, that this is true is because the atomic attraction is decreased when there's motion. So, you know, at a really, really tiny scale, we zoom in, we look at these two surfaces that are slipping past each other. Well, when two things are sitting at rest, there's time for those atomic attractions, those electrostatic attractions, to kind of get a little bit more permanent. Um, and, and they're of course, they're not permanent because we can move it, but... Um, they get a little bit more happy where they are. and so. Um, but when two things are moving past each other, they don't have as much time. Those, those atomic attractions don't have as much time 
to form because there's not as much contact time. Okay, so this is one of the reasons why mu s is bigger than mu k. The coefficient of static friction is bigger than the coefficient of kinetic friction, and it's one of the reasons why we um, have uh, basically a, a stronger force of friction when things are at rest than when things are in motion. Okay, so these coefficients, though, just so that you know, they're used in exactly the same way. You substitute them into the equation for friction, but they have the they have physically different meanings, right? So physically, they have different meanings, but we use them in the exact same way, right? So that to be calculated separately, you kind of have to be a little bit careful. Now, just so that you know, this is mu. I think I said that in the last slide. Mu is a Greek letter, and uh, yeah, it's coefficient of friction. All right, example number one: eighty-five kilograms of sand is added to the back of Elliot's truck. Calculate the increased force of static friction that results from the added sand. You'll notice this very often. People in the winter in the back of their trucks will place big, huge bags of sand. And, of course, one of the reasons they do this is to increase the normal force between their tires and the road. And if they increase the normal force, then they will increase the force of friction and this is important in the winter because then their car will not slip around. And especially, trucks are especially bad for that because the, um, the back of the truck um, is very light. Okay, and so trucks are very bad for that. They, they kind of fishtail all. So people will put sand in the back to increase the normal force. So we want to increase the, we, we want to calculate how much extra force of friction we get from this added sand. And we know that on some particular day, the coefficient of friction between rubber and concrete is 0 0.70. Okay, so here we go. Here's our sand. It's got the force of gravity pulling it down, and it's got the normal force, which is what we're trying to calculate, pushing up. All right. We know that the force of friction is equal to mu, and in this case it's mu s because it's static friction, times the normal. And we know that the sand actually isn't accelerating, so it's not going anywhere. And so the acceleration in the y direction is just zero. And so we could say, OK, well, in this case, the normal minus the force of gravity, normal up, gravity down, is equal to zero. And so our normal force is equal to the force of gravity. So what we can do is we can just substitute right in here. So we'll take this. So instead of writing f normal, we're going to put fg right in here. Okay, And we know what fn is. And here's the increase in the normal force. So here's our normal force right here, 833 newtons. Of course, we knew it was equal to Fg. And so we're going to take this, just as we said before, here's, what the, here's the force of gravity right here. We're going to take this, and now we're going to substitute it into our equation for friction. And so what we end up with is 583 newtons. So the force of friction, the increased force of friction with that sand now is 583 newtons because we increase the normal force. Um, and so that basically the force of friction increases by quite a bit. Okay? All right, example number two. Laura pushes a lawnmower, mass of 12 kilograms. We're pushing horizontally with a force of 150 newtons. So that's horizontally. But usually when you push a lawnmower, you also push down. So we get 40 newtons of our force that we're pushing down. The coefficient of kinetic friction between the wheels and the grass is 0 0.9. So because we're pushing down, we're actually going to increase that normal force a little bit. So this is not going to help us. This is just going to make friction bigger. Find the force of friction that's acting on the lawnmower. So the first step in a question like this, the first step always has to be, let's find the free body diagram. And if we were to draw our little free body diagram, here's the 150 newtons that we're pushing with horizontally. And here's the 40 newtons that we're pushing with down. Okay. We know that gravity is also acting down. We know that the normal force is acting up. And we know that friction is kind of restricting our motion. And so it's op acting in the opposite direction to where we're pushing, which is 150. Because we know that this, this um, lawnmower is going to move horizontally. We know it's not going to move up and down. It's just moving horizontally. And so friction is going to act opposite to that motion. Okay, So here we have, we're going to look in the y direction first. Because 
if we want to know what friction is, friction is mu, which we have, times the normal, which we don't have. So we need to look in the y direction because this is going to help us solve for the normal force. Okay? So here it is. For F net in the y direction is equal to MA. So this is Newton's second law in the y direction. But we know that it's not accelerating in the y direction. So we know that the acceleration is zero. So F net in the y direction is zero. Well, what's F net? Well, I've got plus the normal force because it's acting up. I've got minus the force of gravity because it's acting down. And I've got minus 40 newtons because it's acting down. So you'll notice that the vectors are already taken care of, right? Fn is positive, Fg negative, 40 negative. So the vector aspect of this problem is already taken care of. I've, I've put the plus signs in and the negative signs in where they need to be. And so what I can do is I can rearrange, bring this Fg and this 40 to the other side, and I can calculate the normal force. That's exactly what I'm going to do. It happens to be 157.6 newtons. All right, now that we've done that, we need to find this force of friction. Okay, well, the force of friction is simply equal to mu times the normal. Well, we just calculated the normal by looking in the y direction. So the force of friction then becomes 0 0.9 times 157.6, which we can calculate to 141.84 newtons. Okay. And there's our force of friction. Okay. Now, we can go in lots of different directions from here. We could be asked to find, hey, what's the net force that's, that, that's acting on this lawnmower? We could be asked to find the acceleration. All of these things we could be asked to find. So let's keep that in mind now. We just found the force of friction. And hey, look at example three. Find the acceleration of the lawnmower. So now this would be like a B part. right? So we've done a lot of the legwork. We found the force of friction. Now let's look in the x direction. Okay, so, so we've looked in the y direction already. Now we're going to look in the x direction. This lawnmower is accelerating because it's got an unbalanced force. So A in the x direction is not zero. We're pushing it in the x direction, so it's going to accelerate. Okay, so we got 150, which is how much we're pushing with horizontally. That's in the plus direction, minus the force of friction because that's in the negative direction, and that's equal to mAx. We found out what the force of friction was. It was 141.84 newtons. And so we can simplify and substitute, right? And then we're going to basically simplify this whole thing down. We get 8.16 divided by 12, and that's equal to the acceleration. We just divided both sides by the mass, OK? So here it is, 8.16 divided by 12. We can do that simple calculation. We get 0 0.68 meters per second squared right, okay? And that is the acceleration. So that A part and B part, that's kind of like, if you can do that problem on your own, and you're going to have lots of opportunity to try, this question right here is going to be one of those ones um, that's kind of important. All right, the, the last question is going to be a try this question. Actually, no, it's not, sorry. The last question is going to be a try this question. We're going to do one more question together, example number four. And then the last question, I'm going to let you kind of try on your own. So here's example four. We get these two girls. They're pushing horizontally on a crate. The crate's pretty heavy. It's 50 kilograms. Hannah's pushing from the right with a force of 50 newtons. Susan's pushing from the left with a force of 80 newtons. We know what the coefficient of friction is. It's 0 0.3. Let's find the acceleration of the crate. So here... We're now not just pushing in one direction, we're pushing in two directions. So we're pushing one way and then the other way. So again, let's start with a free body diagram. So here's our crate. So here's the force that you provide, 80 newtons in one direction. Yes, I know it says FU. Don't worry about that. It, this, is not, this is the force that you provide, okay? This is nothing else. It's just the force that you provide. That's, that's bad planning on my part. Here's the force that your friend provides, right? The force from your friend, the force from you. This could say the force of Hannah, the force of Susan, whatever. It doesn't matter. Here's 50 newtons, okay? 80 newtons this way, 50 newtons this way. And we kind of have to ask ourselves, okay, if one is pushing this way with 80 newtons, one's pushing this way with 50 newtons, 
Which way is this thing going to slide? Well, we're, it's going to slide in the direction of the 80 Newton push, obviously. So we put friction going opposite to that. Because if this thing's going to move this way, then friction's got to act opposite to that. No, uh, normal force is up, gravity's down. So there it is. That, uh, what have you. That, that is the free body diagram. And it's a beautiful free body diagram of a crate. All right. So as we have seen before, if we want to know what this friction is, we need to find the normal. The way that we find the normal is that we look in the y direction first. We know that this crate is not accelerating up or down, so the acceleration in the y direction is zero. Normal is positive. Gravity is negative because normal is up. Gravity is down. And that equals zero. We can calculate the normal by saying that the force of gravity is mg. Let me get a value of 490 newtons. All right. Now we can calculate the force of friction. 0 0.3 times 490, which happens to be 147 newtons. OK, so now we're going to look in the x direction. We've looked in the y direction, found our normal, found the force of friction. Now let's look in the x direction. <laughs> Here's Newton's second law, F net equals ma. But we've got these little x's to say it's in the x direction. And here's what we have. 80 newtons that you provide, 50 newtons that your friend provides, and 147 newtons that friction provides. And that's equal to ma. And so what we see is we see, oh, we actually end up getting a negative value for F net, which means what this tells us now, and let's just check for a second, does this make sense? This tells us, this negative sign tells us, that friction, or this, this basically, this crate is not going to accelerate in the direction that we thought. It's going to accelerate back this way towards your friend. But does that make any sense at all? You're pushing with more force than your friend. Does this make any sense? Well, friction is so big in this case, 147 newtons. It's way more than what you can push with. And it's way more than what your friend can push with. And of course, what the math is telling us then, because the math doesn't know that this little term right here is friction. right? The math is telling us, oh, friction is helping your friend push this box backwards. But as a rule, friction can't help move the crate. Friction can only hurt us. right? Friction can't help us move this crate. It can't help your friend. So what's the acceleration of this crate then? Right? Well, we'd say that the acceleration is zero. So we stop the problem here and we say, okay, the force of friction is obviously too big. right? Because if it takes 147 newtons, that's the force of friction. It would take 147.0001 newtons or whatever to move this crate. Well, I can't do it because I can only push with 80 newtons. My friend can't do it because my friend can only push with 50 newtons. So this crate doesn't go anywhere. The friction, the first friction is too strong. And so the acceleration in the case would be zero. Okay? So it's just a little um, sticking point. Here we have a 0 0.5 kilogram block, and it's being slid up a chalkboard, and it's got an applied force of six newtons upward and two newtons inward. So I'm sliding this chalk duster or block or whatever it is up the chalkboard. Okay? The coefficient of kinetic friction is 0 0.4. What's the acceleration of the block? Okay, so here's my free body diagram. This right here where I'm putting the cursor, that's where the board is. Okay, So the board's right here. So I push with 2 newtons in and 6 newtons up. Of course, if this is where the board is, we know that the normal is always perpendicular to the board. This is the force of friction because the block is being slid up the board. And this guy right here, what's this guy right here? I've left this one blank because this is a try this question. I want you to try this. The answer is 0 0.6 meters per second squared. Try this question now on your own. I've kind of flipped things around so the normal is not necessarily equal and opposite to gravity in this case, right? So here's the normal. This force right here, of course, you should be saying, oh yeah, that's gravity right there. Try this question. What we'll do is we'll start our class on Friday, having seen this and having looked at this, 
uh, and this will be basically what we'll do.